Michelle Marie McGrath. Welcome to Unclassified Woman and today I'm looking forward to speaking to Leslie Pine in the UK. Leslie is a leading coach of childless women supporting them to heal to create a fulfilling life. After unsuccessful IVF treatments, she spent 10 years hiding from the truth of her life and story and all that happened was the years passed. Then she trained in NLP and timeline techniques which enabled her to let go of the grief and sadness and find her place in the world. She now uses her first-hand experience and professional skills to help other childless women own their story and heal what holds them back and understand the meaning of what they've been through so they can fully embrace an adventurous, fulfilling life. You can find out more about Leslie at lesliepine.co.uk and that's pine with a Y and I hope you enjoy our conversation. So hi Leslie, so great to have you here today, thank you so much. Well, thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here, Michelle. Thank you. So I'm really looking forward to our conversation today. So just to set us up with a bit of background, can you share a little bit about your personal story and whether you've not had a child due to um, circumstances or choice? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so I, uh, through circumstance, um, big picture, we I was married when I was, got married when I was 34, I just assumed that we had plenty of time to, for me to get pregnant. Um, so we started trying when I was 36 and it didn't happen. And in the next three years, we had six rounds of IVF, none of which worked. We stopped when I got 40 because, well, partly because we'd had enough by then as well, yeah. because it's so grueling. Um, and also because the figures were, you know, were heading against us, that the chances of success really drop when you get to 40. Um, yeah, so we stopped then. Um, that was 13 years ago. Um, it's taken me probably 10 years to get to a place where I'm comfortable talking well, the last couple of years particularly, I've done a lot more work, so I'm very happy. Now, I, I would say I'm in a position to say that childlessness is the biggest gift in my life because without it, I wouldn't have the fulfilling life that I that I have now. And that's, yeah, that's the amazing thing, isn't it? Often that mm. biggest challenge ends up being the biggest gift that we receive, but I know it doesn't seem like that when you're going through it, does it? Absolutely, absolutely. And I know I know a lot of people don't, don't believe necessarily that it can be the gift but it's, it's like you have to do the work in order yeah. to make that happen yeah absolutely and so that must have been so intense going through with different rounds of treatment and of course it's very mm. expensive as well is it not you know not taking into account the mental emotional physical impact as well of, of that experience yeah yes I, I guess it it didn't feel like um it, we were lucky that we could afford it and our doctor paid for the drugs so that was that was helpful um and, and I think it's got a lot more expensive over the intervening, intervening years uh I don't know it just felt like we had to keep going we had to give it our all and to have not not be able, not want to look back and say that we you know we didn't try our best I mean the, the final round was we got free on the on the on the health service the UK health service so we would have stopped after five but as we got the free one we thought we might as well cut, cut, you know do it but um yeah I mean at the end we we couldn't even if someone had offered us lots more free goes we would have still said no because we'd had enough both both of us mentally and physically we were we were done <laughs> Yeah, and I guess it's just, it gets to that point where you think, I just can't focus on this anymore. Yeah. And another yeah. point that often is not mentioned a lot, which is really important, is that, yeah, we don't realise as women that we do have that limited time on our fertility. Mm. We don't always know that much about it, do we, until we're looking into it and exploring that because there's a problem or there's something not happening. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I didn't realise that, 
you know, my fertility was dropping off, a, dropping off a cliff, as it's been described, once I got to 36, 37. And if, I, if I'd known that, I mean, I, we were together for a few years before we got married, I, I would have made different decisions. I mean, it might have ended up with the same result. I shall never know, and I've got no regrets about that. It's just um, I think it's really important for young girls now to not have that information so that if they are in a stable relationship, you know, that they they can make the decisions, um, you know, with, with the knowledge that their fertility is dropped. And also that IVF success rates aren't really, well, they haven't changed in the last 25 years, and they're not as great as you might think they are. We only often hear about the, you know, in inverted commas, success stories or miracle mm. babies. You don't hear Absolutely. about the majority of people um, when it's not worked for them. A lot of the time, in the, the, all these celebrities or people that, that you see in the paper, I mean, it'd be interesting to know the true story behind it. I'd, I'd, I wonder if, you know, they're always painted. Um, well, they don't always tell the truth, I don't think, and, and that's unfortunate because it gives people unrealistic expectations as to as to what their chances might be yeah and also of course like it's a it's a positive news story I guess but it it does give Mm. this very skewed filter and perception of the reality of going through something like that it it does absolutely yes and and it's why that is why you know the the work that you're doing with I'm doing and, and other people that you've interviewed is important about um you know, sh- demonstrating that it it can, it often does fail and you can live a fulfilling life afterwards. You know, it's not... Yeah, and so what were some of the beliefs that that brought up for you to explore as you were going through that time where you were trying? Did you, at that point in your life, did you think, well, that's going to be my way to have a meaningful life? Did you feel as though that having a baby that was going to bring that to you um i'm not i'm not sure i had that conscious thought yeah. actually to be honest or beliefs uh, it was it was that this was the path that you mm. took it mm. was just i don't know it was an expectation or society pressure that you you just assume i just assumed that that was a path that I'd follow. You, you know, you get married, you have children. That's that's yes, the way it is. That's how we're conditioned. Um, absolutely, yeah. Um, and I never thought I wouldn't, you know, be yeah. a be a parent. You know, um, I mean, I, I do have. I am an only child. Um, so, but there wasn't particular pressure from or um, you know beliefs or from parents. It's just that you know they were obviously very supportive. Um, yeah. But yeah, I didn't. I didn't. So I didn't feel any particular um, external pressure it, consciously. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so, how long did that go on for? It was about three years, I think, three or four years, maybe. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, we it's a long through. time, isn't it? To be, it's a, it's a very intense yes. life experience. And so, mm. when you came to the point where you thought, okay, we're just not going to do this anymore, we can't keep going with this, mm-hmm. did you then go through a grieving process of letting that dream go? Um, well, looking back, yes, I did, but at the time, I didn't realise I was grieving. Um, we we sort of hid, I think, really. We just, we, we both of us went very quiet, didn't see friends very much. I, I certainly felt sort of lost and alone and, and like in, I was in some way dark, I've described it as. <coughs> um, so we, I think we spent about a year being with our, being together and keeping, you know, keeping away from a lot of friends. Um, what After that, we there's a, a charity in the UK, Infertility Network UK, which has uh, its childless bits called More to Life and we joined... We joined that group and was really. It was the first time we'd met any anybody else in the same boat as ourselves. So sharing stories, you know, um, was very powerful. Strongest words in the English language, I think, are me too, aren't they? And yeah. um, when you 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 know you you think you're all alone and it's only you, but when you find somebody else who's in the same position, it's um, it's incredible. Really. Well, it's very healing, isn't it, being heard and witnessed like that, especially when you're sharing 
painful experience like that. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I also, I think four years after we'd finished treatment, my father-in-law died and then my mum in, in the space of a very short time. And then, so, the, the, and then I knew I was grieving. But yeah. again, there's all those beliefs that you pick up unconsciously from your family or um, about how to grieve so I I boxed it off you know and I put I remember actually putting it in a box in my head and thinking don't cry don't get upset um, and it's probably stayed in that it stayed in the box for quite a few years really until I dealt with it through learning um, NLP and you know other things yeah and so what other practice is then helped you when you realised that you were doing that and you were then giving yourself permission? So obviously sharing your story with other people that mm. had a similar experience mm. and then you were learning some of the modalities like NLP and what else helped you? Um, I think that, that those two mainly. Yeah. Um, and then recently now, now I've got my, my business, my website. Again, it's keeping the more that you share your story, the more that you stand in your, in your own, um, well, I don't know what to say, your what word truth, fulfillment, if you yeah. like, truth, your own truth, actually. Yes, it is. The more that you do that, the, the more, the stronger you become inside. And I think that, you know, I've been um, yeah, sharing my story, helping others. That's really That really helps to for me to become stronger yeah and really be that role model in demonstrating yeah. and sharing how you can navigate that yeah. space um when you're letting that go and so what would you recommend to other women who are just say they've just come into you know the realization that having a child is not going to be a part of their life where do you think is a great place to start well i would say that it's um just believe, believe, do absolutely believe that you can have a full in, a fulfilling life. Um, search out other places on the internet. I mean, I, I've listened to your podcast. I've got what I call inspirational stories on my website. Yeah. Um, so search out other people and look to see what they did to uh, what that read their stories. And I would say it's un- unlikely to happen. <clears throat> on its own that you probably will need help so search out the the, the help that you um you know that you feel is is right is right for you yeah because often people can feel quite isolated if they mm. feel like they're alone in their experience and if their family are not very supportive or they're coming from a very traditional family um, that they might be feeling pressured by and all their friends are having children that can be very difficult mm. and they can feel like they've not got necessarily got somebody to talk to in their immediate circle that's right so absolutely it, it, and that, yeah, it's helpful isn't it to find somebody else to talk to or your tribe actually yeah yes. absolutely and make those connections and then you can you know see and it's very mm. inspiring I mean just talking to so many inspiring women around the world who are really doing all sorts of different things and it can also be you know they might have assumed they would have children and then they were trying and then they couldn't very much like yourself or they might have always thought that that's not what they wanted but it's interesting that many of them still go through some form of grieving of even if they're clear that it's more yes than a no you know, um, it's quite mm. interesting. It's just part of going, well, yeah, I didn't think I was going to do that. And now I've got to the point whereby maybe the choice is taken away from them because they've not yes. met a suitable partner or just their mm. circumstances. So there's just so many factors involved. It's not mm. black and white ever, is it? Yes, that's right. And and when, I mean, I'm, I'm getting to the menopause stage now and that is you know that's definitely the end isn't it mm. <laughs> and I know a lot of people go through another grieving process there because even though you think you've accepted it, it you know it definitely that is definitely a stop date now isn't it yeah and, so, and then that's like, going into a whole other power cycle though isn't it in a woman's life mm. that can be an extremely empowering time 
You can. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I'm, I haven't got, quite got that yet, but there we go. <laughs> no, but ab- no, but absolutely. I mean, it, it really is. I mean, many women really come into their power at that stage in their life and have complete mm. changes of direction and create stuff. I, I mean, you know, so that can again open up so many more opportunities. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, which is exciting. Mm. Mm, so yes, yes. we we are faced with a lot of, you know, we have to deal with a lot of myths, don't we, around the whole mm-hmm. topic of being a wife, being a mother, all of this that what, you know, and the shoulds that we're conditioned mm. to very unconsciously often. Mm. And sometimes, you know, more overtly from maybe family or society. So we're brought up to believe that being a wife and mother should be a central driving force. And then... <coughs> You know, sometimes it's good to be reminded that whether you've got children or not, you're still a complete woman. You are a, you know, you are a complete being. You don't need Mm. to validate your existence or justify your presence. Absolutely. So that can be something that we need to remember as well. So what else would you say brings you purpose and meaning, Leslie? Um, well, I, I um, making a difference is mm. is one of my key things, and and helping helping other other women to get to that place where where I am now. Yeah. Um, um, and that's I guess that's the main thing. Um, I I enjoy. I mean, the, there's other singing in a choir is is, is but partly for me what has been missing in my life a lot of the time has been belonging because feeling left out if you like of the um of the the mother club it, yeah. you sometimes feel like you haven't got a tribe although i've got a lot of childless friends and um, being in a choir is brings me great joy and fulfills that belonging for me actually so i think um yeah that's very that's really made a great difference to my life um but uh, yeah exploring for me it's ex- also exploring different things learning um because there's always new things i mean i've got my you know ways that i help women and i'm always looking for new ways to help new yeah. you know new things to learn expanding my my own comfort zone is a great um, yeah. i've certainly done that in the last couple of years and um that's a great way of getting fulfilment and um, yeah, and purpose in your life. For me. Absolutely, and singing, that's another great way of expressing mm. your creative energy. It's a great form it of is. self-expression, that, isn't it? Mm. It is, yes, yes. You know, which is great. So what do you feel for you are now the major benefits of not having children? I think for me, I, I, I if you like give it two labels it's about flexibility and and freedom mm. i have in my life and um i have the flexibility to well, to do within the financial constraints but to do different things in my life to explore different avenues to, to explore me yeah. um and Within my, if you like, my business, I can be flexible. I can work on Saturdays. I can work evenings or not take the day off. You know, that flexibility in your life to means that you can, you can go off to the cinema in the middle of the afternoon if that's what you want to do, you know. so um, and, and the freedom, again, to explore me, to explore to different, take, go where my curiosity takes me. And we're very lucky to be able to, to travel and we can do that again outside the school holidays. So Definitely. I'm not quite sure I've quite got to the, there's more that I want to do with both of those, but certainly working on it. And, I, you know, um, I think it's um, it's great. I've got good friends too, and it's been able to do things with them again during the day or the weekends, you know, that, that without having to think about what do I do with school care or yeah. you know, things like that yeah and hey it's more expensive when you have to travel during the school holidays as well if it is it, it is. really yeah. is yeah yeah, yeah. very much so uh, no, i guess one, one more thing is i've got a really good relationship with my husband uh, i'm fortunate to, to have that and we 
that's very strong and we we are able to both explore our own interests and to do things together which is so we've got more of that than we would have than if we had children definitely you can have that focus mm. together can't you mm. can. and i also yeah. wanted to ask you leslie you know because i noticed that you use the word childless and it's always an interesting mm. debate, isn't it? Like those terms, childless and child-free. I mean, I know, like me, mm. you, you're not, you don't think either of them are particularly satisfactory. I, mm. I, I don't like either yeah. of them myself. How can we develop more <laughs> <laughs> appropriate language to describe it? Gosh, I don't know. That's yeah. an interesting question. I mean, I, I, it is a bit odd that we use child. In, to, in in the label that yeah. we, you know we, to describe ourselves something we haven't got and I, I for me I it was about capability I would say you know if I was talking to you I wouldn't would never say I am childless I would say we couldn't have children yes because that's that's what it was and it's not up there with my identity it's not you know um it's just just it's something that didn't happen that we couldn't do in in the same way as other capabilities that I don't have um but yeah I, I don't know I mean unclassified woman is a is a great title yeah um, just letting go um, of the labels and yeah I guess that's really how we bring more compassion and tolerance for all people isn't it really looking yes. at you know the areas where we've got so much in common rather than what's deemed as in inverted commas missing mm. Mm. Absolutely. I mean, it seems to me that all the all the labels that people have, most of the labels that people come, have, have come up with, have got mum or mum or something yeah. in them. You know, yeah. uh, and we are just we are women. It's like different. Absolutely. Women. <laughs> exactly. that's, that's what we are, isn't it? You know. Yeah. I mean, you don't describe men as child free or childless necessarily, do you? No. I mean, no, I've no. never. But look, I guess that will become more and more because, again, that's a whole other topic that yeah. even though it's great that we're having more of these conversations as women, mm. I, I do feel that there's a lot more work to do also for men who, you know, I know there are um, a couple of people that are doing some research on this topic at the moment um, in that area about childless men, men who yeah. might have wanted to become fathers and then they didn't, but... I feel that needs to also be brought more into the light and, you know, more connections and communities created for them as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah, I, th I think it's, you know, we're, it's early days in the conversations, yeah. isn't it? I mean, yeah. that, that, that there's more people like us who are yeah. extending the debate now and it seems like a, over the last two or three years there's more and more and... I think we just have to, we have to keep plugging away, don't yeah, we? To, to yeah, keep, and it's going to be it. really interesting to see, yeah, how the dialogue shifts and changes with consciousness, mm. really, um, over the, the coming years. So that's what it's about, isn't it? It's shifting mm. um, our consciousness within our society and then yeah. the language will naturally evolve with that as well. Yes, and I guess we, we use the language not just for ourselves, but for other people don't we you know yeah, so that society yeah. understands we're here because it, i mean yeah love the title unclassified women but if we had that in general in a newspaper article nobody would know what it was would we so you kind of have to <laughs> exactly. use you know you have to use the childless or child free in the press because that's what that's what society understands as you said yeah yeah it's just it's just a search term isn't it it is. It's a Google search term yeah, too. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And so, mm. well, thank you so much for your time, Leslie. And so, oh, you're very welcome. Where's the best place for us to find you online for people to find you and also look at the work that you're doing and the inspirational stories? Uh, well, my website is lesliepine.co.uk. That's l e s l e y p y n e dot co dot uk. Um, I mean, I'm on Facebook and, and Twitter. I, I would and inspirational stories uh, are all there. I probably the best places to start is my website. Um, no, that's great. Thank you. Well, thank you so thank you. much for your time. Thank and you. And it's been great to speak to you. Mm, likewise. Thanks yeah. very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Unclassified Woman. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe. 
For information on events and services, connect with Michelle at michellemariemcgrath.com.